Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're talking about video gels, the different types, and what you can do with them. There are three basic types of gels when it comes to photo and video. One type is diffusion, and I will tell you right now, this video is gonna be noisy for this reason but we'll just have to live with it. Um, diffusion gels are used to diffuse light. It's pretty straightforward. So you shoot light through this, you get a beautiful soft light. We're not gonna talk about that in this video. We're gonna stick with color gels and I'll show you the two different types of those. The first of the two types of color gels are correction gels. These come in four different flavors, CTB, CTO, and plus and minus green. CTB stands for color temperature blue, as you see here. This can be used to take a warm color source and cool it down. So something like uh, a tungsten 3200, you could use CTB to cool it down to daylight. And the inverse is true as well. You can use CTO, which stands for color temperature orange, to warm up a light and get it from daylight to tungsten and anywhere in between. Now there's all kinds of different strengths for these and those are measured in fractions. So CTB, as an example, there is double, which is a really strong blue, full CTB, half CTB, quarter, eighth, and so on. So there's several different strengths. It's not just blue or orange. And there's all kinds of different charts out there and different manufacturers have different information on how strong and how much of a color temperature these will change. So definitely check those out. So that's color temperature blue and color temperature orange or CTB and CTO. Plus and minus green are just that. Plus green is green, minus green is magenta. Those are used to correct shifts in color. So if you have a light that's very green, you could add some minus green to correct that or the other way around. So those are the main correction gels. We use those to correct light. They also can be used for other things, which we'll talk about in a second, but that's the primary use. An example of using correction gels would be taking really poor quality LED lights and correcting the color. So I have two different lights that are really, really bad. And I used a combination of plus green, minus green, uh, CTO and CTB to correct them. So here is a white piece of paper with my camera set to the correct white balance and using those lights, you can see how terrible they are. Um, but with those filters, we can correct those and it's pretty amazing. So that's correction gels. Uh, if you want a whole pack of those with all the different strengths, there's a great kit that you can pick up from Digital Juice. I'll have links in the description. It has a nice wrap uh, bag and it has all the filters, really nice big ones, which is hard to find. Um, um, and then they have little stickers uh, letting you know what the strengths are. They also come with some little C47 clips. Um, really great way to get started with correction gels. Now we're gonna move on to effect gels, which are all these different colors. Um, you can spend very little or a lot on these. So for starters, there is a $10 pack that I picked up and I've been using in a lot of my videos. Um, they're a little more rigid than I would like, but they do work. Um, so those are from newer, they have a protective film you have to peel off. So I've used those on a lot of my backgrounds um, over at the B-roll station. Great way to get started with color gels. We'll talk about more uses for those. Um, another kit that is awesome are several different kits from uh, Roscoe. They're a very popular company and they have some fantastic gels. These are a little more you know, papery and flexible, which is good for a lot of lights. So this will come with a little bit of CTO, a little bit of CTB and several other colors. So this one is the uh, photo lighting kit. They have a cinema kit and several others that come with a lot of different colors. Now, what do you do with these effect gels? Well, the, the most basic use is to color a light and use it, you know, like on my background. What I'm going to do now is uh, go ahead and film a bunch of different scenarios. We'll sit down and I'll go through uh, which lights I gelled and how I set them up and how you can get some really dramatic and really cinematic um, color using gels. So this first setup is going to be a little scene that I filmed and I wanted the main light on myself to be kind of an orange warm light and then everything else to be kind of a bluish green. Rather than gel all the windows and try to make everything else blue or green, I simply took one single light source, that'll be my key, and added a CTO gel as well as just a little bit of minus green. And this is what things looked like in real life. Pretty gnarly and 
awful. But when I set my white balance to that main key light, since it's the opposite of kind of a blue green color, I was able to get all the ambient light, the windows, all the light in the room to be this bluish green. So the trick here is you can pick a color that you want most of the environment you're filming in to be, doesn't matter what color, and then for your key light, just gel it so it's the opposite of that color. The main way I use gels is for backgrounds. You can use a single color or what I like to do often is kind of mix two different similar colors. So in this example, I have two lights on the background. One has a purple gel and is kind of hitting the entire background. And then the other has a pink gel, but it's a little more spotty and off to one corner. This gives a little more depth to the background instead of just having a single blank flat color, you can kind of mix it up a little bit and add some interest. You also notice I have a little bit of a kicker light off to one side that gives me kind of a blue or cyan color. It's a little harsh in this example, but it goes to show you what you could pull off with just a couple gels. Here's another example of using gels on the background. I have two colors, one on each corner of the frame, and these are complementary colors. So we have kind of an orangey skin tone color and then a cooler blue color. And one final example would be to use a light with a gel as your fill. I normally wouldn't do this in it's going to depend on skin tones and what gels you go with. But here you can see I have the light just out of frame. And again, you want to use some kind of complementary color to the skin tone. So I have kind of the orange skin on one side and just a little bit of that cyan or blue on the other. So you have it several amazing different uses for video gels. Now, what are the downsides that could potentially crop up with using these? The first and foremost is you're going to have a cut down on your light. So each gel uh, is rated for a certain uh, amount of light loss that'll happen if you use it. So this one right here is a 90 Roscoe green gel, um, as you can see. And it is very, very strong. Even if I put it on my face here, you'll see it cuts down a ton of light, but it's gonna give you an incredibly saturated green. So each filter has a different light loss uh, spec, if you will. The other thing is, if you use hot lights, these can often melt. So you wanna make sure you get cinema or video hot light rated ones. A lot of these are made for photographers, so they're, they're mainly gonna be having a quick flash, which is fine. Um, luckily, a lot of us are using LEDs and you'll have zero issues with these. But if you're going to be using a bunch of hot lights, just remember, you don't wanna melt these things. That'd be kind of gross and it really stinks. I've been there. I've melted my fair share of gels. Um, the other downside is if you do use LEDs, um, all the specific specs, depending on the manufacturer like Roscoe, that they um, offer to us when it comes to color temperature changes, none of that is really going to matter because there's no standards with LEDs when it comes to their hues. So how much magenta, green, uh, their color temperatures are all over the place. So it's not as simple as it was when we used hot lights where it was like, you know, HMI and tungsten or you know, incandescent. So how do we mount these gels to lights? Uh, a very straightforward one and one that is very popular is to use clothesline pins or what's known as C47s on the barn doors of your light to clamp these down. Uh, if your light doesn't have barn doors, what I do all the time is just use a little piece of masking tape. Another route to take is if you know you love using a certain set of gels with a particular light, you can create you know, custom fitting gel sets. So um, I've cut various shapes out that fit perfectly with certain lights that way I don't have to carry all these you know awkward big sheets of gels around with me you can cut them down to smaller pieces for smaller lights um, but usually masking tape or some kind of clip or clamp works well for me as for buying gels, you can spend as much as you'd like here. Uh, if you have the money, I would recommend going with the Roscoe gel kits. There's several different kits with several different colors. So you can kind of find which kit has colors you think you'll use, pick those up, and then over time build on that kit. Um, a lot of them come in this standard, you know, 12 by 12 size. Um, if for video, it's nice to have those bigger ones, but again, you've got this huge, you know, sheet that's kind of difficult to work with. So for effect gels, um, stick with Roscoe if you can. Otherwise, there's a lot of really budget-friendly stuff like um, that newer kit that I talked about that's around $10, which will work just fine. 
As for correction kits, I really dig that digital juice because with one purchase, you've got pretty much every single strength of all, you know, CTB, CTO, plus and minus green. So those are great tools. Um, it comes with that nice pack so you can keep it all organized. Um, so those are a couple different recommendations. I will have links to all the gels that I talked about. So you'll be able to check those out in the description. Also, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, that's going to really do it for this video. You can watch fresh videos here at DSLR Video Shooter every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.